The next example I want to show you is how to pull uh, financial reports from QuickBooks uh, profit and loss balance sheet, export them into Excel, <clears throat> then perform some sort of uh, analysis like uh, taking one result dividing it by the other. So I'll take my marketing expense and divide it by income for example. So I want to take this information and pull it into Excel, make some sort of analysis that's meaningful for my client and then after I save it I want to be able to grab information from uh, from QuickBooks and update it just in case uh, the the information changes. Now another very important piece is I want to make sure that before I export it that I go to advance and display rows and I click on all because I need to make sure, I absolutely need to make sure that uh, if the report is refreshed and an account is not used, that when I go ahead and refresh the report and the accounts are uh, maybe not used in a different time period, that they don't mess up my Excel formulas. Okay, so I'm going to click on Excel, create new worksheet, and I'm just doing a regular export. I'm going to go to create new worksheet, click export. The system is going to create the spreadsheet for me. Here it is, and uh, all I have to do is rename it. So I'm going to put here balance sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and just save it. Okay, I'm going to save it in the desktop. Uh, I want to make sure that I know where I saved it and I, I know the name because I have to reference this later on when I'm going to uh, save another a worksheet on top of it for the profit and loss. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to QuickBooks. Uh, let me close Excel first. So I'm going to switch back to QuickBooks, do the exact same thing. Go to uh, Customize Report, go to Advance, and make sure that I'm doing all here. Okay, because the rule applies to both reports and then I'm going to collapse it uh, just because for the purpose of analysis I'm going to go ahead and collapse it and again the, even the zero accounts are there because uh, I did that option that says all so I'm going to go to create new worksheet um, not update new worksheet it, it has to be create new worksheet so just make sure that we're not doing update yet we're just doing the create okay so we'll hit create and then we're going to go use existing workbook and we're going to reference that workbook and what this will do is it'll create a new tab inside of the workbook people get those two terms confused workbook is the excel file and the worksheet is the tab inside of the excel file so i want to make sure that's clear so there, there's my new tab sheet one so I'll, I'll rename this to profit and loss and then i i have to uh save this and, and close it before going into quickbooks yeah make sure you always do that uh, th that way when you go go ahead and do the update um, it, it will work now well I actually didn't have to close it let me let me open it back up and um, and, and, and do let's do the analysis now so I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new a new sheet and from that sheet I'm gonna take two pieces of information across the two reports or even within the same report and create some sort of meaningful analysis so I'm, I'm gonna do uh, return on fixed assets that's the, let's say that's a number that I look at so uh, I'm gonna take uh, net income for the period for year to date uh, period and then I'm gonna divide that by the fixed assets I mean whatever that means uh, to your client I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're assuming that this is meaningful uh, to your client so the other piece we're gonna do is marketing expense divided by sales so we're just gonna do the ex example with two metrics so I'm going to grab in this particular case the uh, total net income and then I'm going to divide that by and this is just standard Excel formula I'm going to divide that by total fixed assets okay and I'll just press enter here and I'll save it there it is and let me just uh, change kind of the formatting here to a percentage so 600 percent uh, six times 600 percent the the amount of fixed assets so let's take a look at now uh, I'm gonna make this bold and red so you can see it so let's look at marketing expense divided by sales so we'll grab marketing expense and we'll divide that by uh, total income and we're just trying to uh, create two metrics that, that, that again they're they're meaningful to your client uh, for whatever reason okay actually that should be a percent I'll change it later um, so these are the two numbers we're looking at and um, and we're looking at them for that period that we exported which is that December 15th period so I'm gonna save this get out of it and uh, just remember the numbers <laughs> and get out of it and then I'm gonna change the periods inside of QuickBooks so I'm gonna go from December to November so I'm gonna go December uh, November 1st to November 30th go ahead and refresh that I'm not changing the order keeping it collapsed keeping it with that option that says all accounts and then I'm gonna update the existing worksheet just exactly as you're seeing it and I'm gonna actually gonna tell it which is the sheet 
that we're updating. So we just told it, hey, this is the new profit and loss that's going to take over that existing worksheet. That way, the formulas that we created on the third sheet uh, pretty much stay intact. Okay, so you should be able to see it. I'm just going to save it um, because I, ha I still have to do the balance sheet. So I'm going to follow the exact same exercise here. So I'm going to change the period instead of December, November, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go to Update Existing Worksheet, and then I'll select uh, the worksheet uh, within that workbook, which is the balance sheet, and then we'll hit Export. And let's wait until that loads. And we should be able to see it real quick here. There it is. Okay, so now you see we have new numbers there, right? Before it was 622 and 0, now it's 619. See, I was supposed to make that a percent. So now it's 619 and, and 3%. So that's that's for the November period, right? Because that's the last one we updated. That's for the November period. So we are going to just get out of here and save it so you can see the two metrics that we created. So this could be a, a nice little tool you can create for your client. And obviously, these metrics could all be customized, right? They could be uh, different for every client, every industry. And these two that I did were just two random ones. Like I'm not saying that every client should you should analyze these two uh, points in here. So I'm going to show you uh, another example of something we can do uh, in Excel, something something fun with, with uh, QuickBooks and Excel. We're going to uh, double click here on total income. So I'm basically going to create a report that contains all of the detailed income data uh, that uh, that's in this QuickBooks file and I want to export it to Excel but I want to do something interesting with it I want to do a pivot table okay so if you don't know what pivot tables are this is gonna be a, a nice uh, eye-opener here um, but I have to make sure that I don't have any of those uh, uh, sub uh, classifications there so for the so total buy should be should be all or like this it should be a total only exactly as you're seeing it there I can't have any total buy so let me export this to Excel in the exact same way I would export uh, any anything else but this time I'm gonna do a CSV now I'm gonna do a CSV for a specific reason I, I need this to uh, avoid having headers and footers and all that stuff so I just wanna sort of just bring the data that matters so I'm gonna save this CSV file in my desktop and then I can just open the CSV in in Excel, right? Like just like a regular Excel file. So we'll wait until that loads. Here we go. See, this got no headers. So all I have to do is uh, clean out the stuff that I don't need. Uh, one of the things I don't need is that very last total. It, it doesn't have any meaning anywhere. It, it, will, got, it will actually kind of mess up my numbers. So I'm just going to delete that, completely delete that. Then I'm also going to delete those uh, empty headers that are at the very beginning like that. That column that's empty, I'll get rid of that. I don't, I don't need that. And that, that empty one, I'll get rid of that too. That second row there. So now I have just square data, right? Just have straight database style data. And then from here, I can create a pivot table, and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna see how, um, how quickly we can do so, sort of deep analysis. So we'll go here to insert pivot table, and uh, we'll hit OK. And then, if you already know what a pivot table is, this is obviously just a review and something you already know, but if you don't, this is a, a quick, nice, brief introduction into the world of pivot tables. So we're going to grab the customers and put them on the rows. Okay, that way it just grabs all my QuickBooks data, puts all the customers that have activity there. We're going to go to uh, maybe a transaction type, and we can put it here as a, as a filter, so I can actually choose uh, within which transaction type I want to work with. So let's say I want to limit it to sales receipt, right, or something like that. Yeah, I can limit it to sales receipt, and then it's just going to narrow down the amount of customers that have sales receipts. Then I want to grab maybe the credit amount, which is like the sales amount. I want to put it here under under value. Uh, the default treatment of in pivot tables is count, so it's just basically counting the, the amount of uh, transactions. So I just want to change that to sum here so it adds it up. So what you're seeing here is a simple report. It's it's total amount of sales receipts uh, uh, per customer all, all added up in there. Now I can do more things like I can I can grab the date and, and, and put it uh, into the filter. I mean I can do m many things but the important part is this is where the data is coming from. It's coming from the raw QuickBooks data. I can put the date 
um, in, in the filter, for example, and and then I can actually choose, narrow it down, which, which dates I want to see or what date range I want to see. So it's just a, a simple example of how you can do um, sort of deep detail analysis in Excel with a pivot table by exporting it uh, from QuickBooks. All right, so let me go ahead and just get out of here. Let's do one more example. So uh, I'll show you graphs. So we'll, we'll export the raw data from Excel and we'll create a graph from it. And, and that in itself will, will finish my detailed sort of Excel example. So I'm going to do a, a, a graph of all the sales. And I'm going to pick a, a specific time period. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab uh, all the sales. And also I'll grab, uh, let's say, uh, payroll expense. So I'm going to grab two line items for the whole year, which is sales and payroll expense. And I'm making it by column so I get each month. So I'm going to grab this specific report, and I'll export this to Excel, and I'm going to clean it up to only see the information I want to see. In this case, I'm not doing CSV. I'll just do a regular Excel. So I'm going to, once it opens up in Excel, I'm going to get rid of what I don't need, right? Um, so I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the headers there. I, I'm just real quick. I'm paste. I'm pasting it as values. That way, the formulas don't don't mess me up. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and keep the headers. So there's my total income. And I'm going to get rid of everything but payroll expenses. So I get rid of everything but payroll expenses. So I'm going to be basically left with two line items, uh, total income and total payroll. And then from here, it's just pretty much simple. I can create a graph from here. But I have to make sure that these like these titles make sense. So because there were one was sort of a bigger hierarchy than the other one, I'm, I'm just moving it around. And um, I, I got to make sure the very last one, uh, the total one, uh, it's out too because I, I don't I don't need that so I, I just need these here so from here I just select the data and and insert a graph this is a regular Excel graph we'll do a a line graph and the two bar the two bar line graph what it'll do is just show me uh, a quick comparison so that's that's in a nutshell how you can get QuickBooks data into Excel and different things you can do with it I'm not saying you're limited to doing one thing or the other but there's there's obviously different things you can do with it. All right, we're going to switch over to uh, Mike from uh, Finograph.